Natan Obed will lead the group representing Canada's Inuit for another three years. Yesterday, he was re-elected president by the board of the Inuit Taparit Kanatami, beating out two other candidates vying to unseat him. Before the vote, he was quoted as saying, I don't feel like I'm done yet. So now that he's won, what's his plan? Joining me now is the ITK president, Natan Obed. Hi, Mr. Obed. It's nice to see you again, and congratulations. Thank you so much. Nice to see you, too. Nice to see you. Thanks for coming in. So let's talk about the next three years. Tell us about your priorities as you head into your second term. Well, first off, the renewal of the relationship between the Crown and Inuit is in full swing. And in anticipation of the 2019 federal election, we have a lot of work that we need to complete. So we are working with the federal government and with the prime minister and key cabinet ministers on joint priority areas through our Inuit Crown Partnership Committee, but we're also doing things in relation to legislation. Uh, the First Nations Inuit and Métis language legislation is something that is top of mind, and we do hope that we can pass federal legislation that will uh, ensure that our languages thrive in this country alongside the, um, uh, the official languages in this country currently, French and English, moving forward. Can you explain why that's so important? It is central to our identity, and we as Inuit uh, um, still speak Inuktut, which is the term that we use to describe all of the dialects of, of our language, um, much more than uh, many other indigenous people in this country. We, uh, have about 35,000 active speakers out of our 65,000 population. And there are very practical implications for Inuit when we can't receive federal services in our language, or whether when there isn't funding for K-12 education, or we don't have language promotion um, um, opportunities the way that other Canadians do or then just the very uh, simple thing of, of communications and materials that we have, books and media opportunities. We're hoping that this legislation will pave the way for a new reality uh, for the sustainability of Inuktut. I've read, and correct me if I'm wrong, but along the way you've received some criticism from sometimes political rivals about your fluency yes. in that language. How has your understanding of the importance of the language, or has it evolved over your time leading this organization? Well, it started when I was very young, and in my community wow. when I, I didn't have the opportunity to learn my language as a child, and then it being something that is um, some, a point of attack from other people within my own society, whether it was my peers when I was younger or whether coming back and working in uh, my community and people saying that I, I, I should know my language. So I, as an individual, know what it's like to lose language and know the, the ramifications for that, which is why it's been very important for my wife and I to ensure that our children speak Inuktut. So they, they both do their 11 and 9. But we've had um, a great opportunity in Akadalui to, to have immersion daycare and to have K through 4 in Inuktitut. Many Inuit in other communities across Inuit Nunangat do not. And I bring all of those personal experiences into this policy conversation where I know what it's like to be uh, an Inuk without my language and I know how hard it is and I also know how much I want to be able to have my language. I don't want future generations of Inuit having that same um, disconnection with themselves and their identity as they go through life and then also for the people for the Inuit who have never lost their language and the communities that still function in Inuktitut or other dialects of the um, Inuktitut language. I want them to have the opportunity to not ever have to worry about losing their language and the place in their society. Another policy area that you talked about around your election is, is housing, shared policy area. Can you, uh, I guess, lay out for us what you're looking for from the federal government? I know there has been some money that's come. Uh, mm -hmm. Is it enough and isn't it, is it directed towards the right places? Currently, there's a 52% overcrowding rate uh, in Inuit Nunangat for Inuit in, in relation to housing as opposed to, I believe, it's 9% for the general Canadian population. We've had a housing crisis since um, housing was first introduced in its current form in our communities. In many cases, uh, we were coerced into communities and insufficient housing has been the only reality that Inuit and those communities have ever known. Many of our communities are very small, you know, um, 500 people to 1,500 people, and there isn't a robust private housing market. 
So our housing stock and how housing is provided in our communities is very different than what an average Canadian would imagine. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not just about investing in social housing. It's also reimagining how housing, housing happens in Inuit Nunangat and for Inuit no matter where they live in this country. And we're in the um, final stages of, of creating a national Inuit housing strategy. We'll be working with Indigenous Services and Minister Philpot to ensure that on day one of that strategy, there are interventions or new directions that we can go in to solve this housing crisis once and for all. Is there a timeline for that at all? We're hoping to have it approved by our board of directors at our next meeting in November. Oh, excellent. Before I let you go, I wanted to ask you about something that was in the news this week, and that is the fact that uh, it appears Ottawa has approved or, or given the go-ahead to creating a statutory holiday to mark uh, what happened in residential schools in this country, and I'm wondering what your feelings on that are. This is in keeping with uh, one of the calls to action within the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. It also is in keeping with um, not wanting to forget. Uh, it's nothing to do with wanting to keep a culture of victimhood, as was mentioned this week by uh, um, uh, another leading politician. Mm -hmm. This is about being truthful about what has happened in this country and learning from it and moving together and moving forward with uh, the shared understanding and also the um, the ability for all Canadians to understand and then to work towards a better future where Indigenous peoples and all Canadians can have a shared understanding of a very difficult history and a path forward together that is not um, encumbered by ignorance or a lack of understanding about what has happened to Indigenous peoples in this country. Okay, I'll leave it there. Congratulations again, Mr. Obed. Great, Great. to have you on the show again. Thank you very <laughs> Thanks much. Thanks for your time.